Hey, this is Sasha and welcome to another episode here on Backstage Income where I share with you how to build and grow a profitable business, more specifically online. And in today's episode, I'm going to share you uh, share with you a Dropbox and a Google Drive or a cloud storage alternative. So if you're basically getting started online and you're starting to build a team and you're working on your business, uh, oftentimes you have to share some files. Sometimes files need to be in the cloud because then you can sync them to things. So there's a lot of uh, great tools out there to share larger files. Uh, some of them are free, but they expire in seven or 10 days. So some of these cloud services like Google Drive, OneNote, uh, Dropbox, you know, they make a great business by just hosting and storing your files and that way it makes it easier to share. Now, the thing with that is, is it starts to add up fairly quickly. And I'm gonna show you an alternative and what we use within my company because the reality is, is remember, when you're running a business, things will constantly change and evolve. And sometimes one tool is good, and then eventually you kind of want and crave more features. So instead, rather than for us to constantly hop on the next bandwagon that has more tools and more features, uh, we look at how can we adjust ourselves to make the tool work for us. Uh, kind of gets us out of the box. So in the case, let's take a look and let's get started and uh, look at Dropbox pricing. So here, when you have a basic account, a basic account is two gigabytes, it's free. Uh, you can access things anywhere, but there's no smart sync, there's no uh, full text search, uh, you know, uh, and there's a lot of other features there that uh, I didn't include here as, as we look at the screenshot. Uh, if you wanna go with the plus, you got one terabyte of storage, uh, and you have uh, kind of mobile offline folders as well that you can sync. And then you have a uh, professional, which is about $16 a month. So you get two terabytes there of storage and you have some smart sync. So that's kind of the basic uh, pricing um, with Dropbox. Now, if you look at for teams, cause this is really where most business owners wanna go to, is they're actually looking at 1250 per user per month. Now, remember, when they do this, remember they're billing you as a business. So it's not per computer, 1250, you can always share that account amongst team members. So if you have two accounts, one for you and one for your team, you technically only need two accounts, even if you have a five person team. There's nothing that says that it's a per, um, per individual user, it's per user account that you wanna have within your business. It's kind of like customer support uh, tickets, right? If you are answering and sharing the account to use the system, if you're not logged in at the same time, you're fine. Um, so in either case, in this case, 1250 per user per month, but again, three, four people uh, starts to add up because some people wanna upload their own files, kind of have their own storage. So now you get into $40 a month. Now, if you want a little more storage, everything in standard and as much space as needed, well, now you got $20 per user uh, per month, starting at three users. So you're starting at $60 minimum, right? So $60 um, uh, minimum, even if it was just you individually that wanted to use it, multiply that times 10, you're looking at $600 to six, uh, 60 to 720 per year. So it starts to add up uh, very quickly at $700 a year. Uh, there's better alternatives for a three person team. Let's look at the Google Drive pricing. Now, this is a little more different because it's kind of individual. It's not always for teams, but they have some new things coming out soon. Uh, but you're basically looking at, again, 10 terabytes, about $100 a month, two terabytes, about $20 a month. So at $20 a month, you know, two to $400 a year is somewhere where you're kind of looking at two terabytes. If you're looking at 10 terabytes, uh, you know, it starts to add up quite quickly. You got about $1,000 a year easily uh, that it could cost you to just have Google Drive uh, on there. So my thought for you and an alternative is why not get your own cloud server? So if you're not really tech savvy, you don't understand how it works, it's basically, I'm gonna show you, a simple box with hard drives in it. So this is what you get, it's around $400. Uh, you can get one at Newegg, so you can get a four bay one. There's bigger ones like uh, 12 bays, eight bays, six bays. Uh, but to get started, you know, you can get something that's four bay. We use a Synology server that's uh, eight bay actually here. So check my Backstage Income resources page and see exactly the tools that I use. So that way you can check that out if you're interested. Uh, but basically you can get a four bay here for $400. Uh, and then what you do is you add in some hard drives in there, which could be 100 to 200 
uh, to $300 depending on the hard drives that you get in there, but then you own it, it's yours, and you can use this thing for five, eight years without a problem, and it just connects uh, to your internet. So all you do is you have this hookup in the back, I'm gonna show it to you, it's not that tough, um, I could actually show you mine personally, but then I have to move the camera around. So you have these hookups right there. One goes uh, from your internet uh, into that port. The other, you could actually direct connect it to your computer if you have a physical computer. And then you got a power cord right there. And it's just a box with just hard drives in it. And what happens is, is when your team uses this, all, all that they do is they access these hard drives. So you just pop them in there, boom, boom, boom. And the thing is, is if one fails, you could set it up to where if one fails, well, it works off of the other two or three because it mirrors them or it has redundancy. So that's the great news. The downside, of course, is it's in your house. So if you have a fire, that's a big problem. But other than that, on the long term, you get way more features out of these boxes as well. So uh, here's kind of uh, the Synology system. There's also QNAP system. Um, you can browse through the website and you can take a look at the disk station manager. So you can file share, file sync, data backup, protect yourself. Uh, there's multimedia services management and it really comes down to the power of these packages and applications. So what you can do is it's kind of like a mini computer. You install these packages just like on your phone. You have apps that you install and you can install these different packages and then you can run them on that little server and you just access them from your computer. You tie it in and you access them. Now, you got to do the setup a little bit. It takes a little bit of time. I'd say probably to set things up it takes about 25 minutes. Um, you do audio station. So if you want some audio things, manage your music on a personal level, you could set that up. Uh, if you want a DNS server, you could do that. Document viewer, you could do a wiki. Uh, I mean, just look at these apps. There's a file station, there's a backup system, hyper backup vault to sync things. It's like an iDrive. Um, there's just so many different things. You could use a mail server, media server. Uh, you could use NoteStation, which is basically a replacement for Evernote, so you don't have to pay for Evernote. If you want to host uh, some uh, WordPress sites, they have that in here. If you want Microsoft Office, hey, they got Office uh, spreadsheets in here as well. Uh, Google Drive, pretty much the same thing. So take a look. If you click this, look, it looks pretty much exactly like Google Drive. And you could share this amongst your team. Uh, take a look at uh, here, NoteStation. So here, if we go to NoteStation, right here, look at it. It's basically like Evernote. Now, I will tell you that many of these, because there's just so many apps that are being created, many of these are not as fully featured or rich as maybe the Evernote package or maybe the Dropbox package might not be as um, amazing with all the features, but let's say uh, Synology share a link and then you go ahead and here's how you share file links. So it tells you right here, hey, you could share your file links and you have a validity period. Um, so it does a lot of these things that you can go ahead and do with many of these other uh, systems. It's basically a replacement. So this is this is how you share a link. So you share a link, you, you set up your IP address, boom, and you share that link. So the backend system, I'm gonna show it to you. This is my backend system. It's simple, you log in through the website. So any browser will do. Uh, you could go into kind of a package control system. And if I wanna go ahead and install any of these, I could just hit install. I have a few packages installed right here. Uh, note station, the drive, the office system. So I could go ahead and access some of those things and you know work on Excel directly here and I can share those files with my team. So really you're working with your team and sharing a lot of different things uh, much easier and it's all direct on your computer. So when you're accessing it, you don't have to really download anything. It's already direct from your hard drive. So that's my personal thought and recommendation for those of you that have kind of a multi-person team but are kind of watching your costs and are interested in the long haul. The long haul, this is a smarter decision. In the short term, of course, paying 10 or $20 a month is a lot cheaper. But if you have the $500 or so to get yourself started with a server, this is the smarter and better approach because you can do way more with it not every application will have as many features as maybe the paid ones because those are really specific and they really try to drive it home to where they make it enticing. But 
we kind of work around that. So there might be, hey, there might not be a dark mode, whereas in Evernote, you have a dark mode. In the note station, you don't have a dark mode. Um, you know, so some things just don't work 100%. There might be a couple little features missing here and there. But overall, bang for your buck, if you can just slightly adapt yourself, the cost savings are astronomical. Because imagine putting in 12 terabytes in each one of these bays. Well, you know, you could have 48 terabytes. You could have, you know, 60 terabytes of storage without a problem. And if that starts to get cluttered, well, you just pop in another drive. So, you know, and if you're looking to just put three terabytes in, you could just put one terabyte drive in each one of these and have an additional one as a backup in case one fails. So that's a four bay uh, system. Of course, there is bigger systems out there that you could go with. Uh, here, for example, a six bay. Here's an eight bay. This is kind of the one that we have. Uh, and I just pop in, you know, anywhere between eight to 12 terabytes in there. We got tons of files from video stuff that we make, and it takes up a lot of room and storage. So once I'm done filming this video, for example, it goes directly on that server and storage. It'll notify uh, the calendar where I want to schedule it. So I, I pick the scheduling place. After that, that'll get put into our task management system and into the database. And it's basically all works from this system. Now the task management system, we have it linked up through Zapier, uh, but overall, all the files are stored here because otherwise all the video recordings that we make and create are just uh, huge data hogs. And uh, these are the things that are uh, kind of a lifesaver. So anyways, I hope this makes sense, gives you something to think about um, when it comes to cloud storage and what is it that you should be doing. And really, I wish I got into this way sooner than I did. Uh, I tried it many years back, but the problem behind them was the software was not up to date. And these things now, they have mobile things that you can sync. So if you're looking for mobile apps, yeah, they have the mobile apps as well where they work. Um, again, they have some bugs, they have some issues because they just have so many applications and packages. But overall, if you're looking for some use, some general use, if you can adapt slightly on a personal level uh, for, for your money, you're going to save a lot in the long run. So think about that and see and investigate them a little bit more and further in depth. And I think we'll go and cover some of these things more in depth in the future. But I just wanted to get you uh, thinking about a different cloud storage alternative so that way you can see the bigger picture of where you could go with your business and, of course, the smarter approach. All right, thank you so much for joining me. And if you're interested in seeing more other great training videos like this one about business, about email marketing, be sure to hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. Or, of course, join me on my newsletter list by clicking the link over here. Enter your name and email address when you get there, and you'll be signed up and ready to go. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.